Welcome back to the Online Sale Coach YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be looking at whether the AC75 class, the class used in the last edition of the America's Cup, will and should be used in following editions of the Cup. And stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm going to be asking your advice on a big decision for this channel. But before we get into that, let's have a look at what we know so far about the class decision for the next America's Cup. So Ineos skipper Ben Ainsley is a big proponent of retaining the AC75 for following cup cycles. Here it reads that Ainsley wants the current America's Cup class to be retained for at least the next 10 years. And Ineos have big sway over these decisions. They've taken up the major assignment of becoming the challenger of records and they basically have the job of co-writing the rules and co-organising the cup with Defenders Team New Zealand. Ineos and Team New Zealand have signalled that the AC75 class will be used for the next two versions of the America's Cup. ANC believes that retaining the AC75 class will provide more continuity and he believes that will be a good thing for the Cup. Speaking on the Shirley Robertson Sailing Podcast, Ainsley said that the fact that we're committing to the AC75 class is a massive boost to the Cup. I'd like to see the class committed to for the next 10 years or more. So it looks like the AC75 will be the class used in the next America's Cup, and that may well lead on to it being used in following editions of the Cup. Ainsley goes on to say that uh, one of the most successful Cups we've seen in modern history was in Valencia 2007 with five versions of the IACC class. So sticking to the AC75 class is really key for the short to medium term future of the Cup. Since 2007, the class of boat has changed every cycle. This has allowed us to see the amazing evolution of the America's Cup classes over the last 10 years, but it's come at a cost. And that cost is consistency. Consistency in class could allow cost-cutting measures to be worked through and that would hopefully open the gate to a lot more teams and that was a big criticism of the past America's Cup is that there were only three challengers. But consistency isn't the only reason Ainsley is supporting this. Ainsley felt the AC75s had proven themselves as a match racing machine whilst keeping the sport on the edge of technology which he felt was an important role for the Cup. So in the America's Cup, you've always had this difficult balance between innovation on the one hand and good racing on the other. A big criticism of the last America's Cup was that the racing was boring. Innovation is great, but it can lead to mismatches where one America's Cup team has a significantly faster boat than the challenger. And arguably that happened in the last America's Cup. So if we could reach some sort of consistency of design, that doesn't mean there will be no innovation, but if we can agree on a set class for a while, that will hopefully allow uh, the playing field to be leveled somewhat. Innovation has allowed us to reach a point where probably we're 95% as good as anything we could come up with in future. So the argument is, why bother innovating that last 5%, which uh, is probably going to be... a a slow process which will yield little visible results and why not just stick with the AC75 class for a while. The AC75 class ticks for two big boxes that an America's Cup class must have. It needs to be fast and exciting on one hand and on the other it needs to be big so spectators from the shore can watch for racing and see what's going on. Non-sailors like the AC75 design and the only criticism really is that the racing wasn't close enough. The class designs over the last 10 years have really revolutionised the sport. They've made it much more exciting and really made the America's Cup what it is today. And the AC75, while maybe not being the peak of what innovation can lead us to, is certainly most of the way there. Where do you see these AC75s developing from here? I think these are incredible boats. The speed is phenomenal, but we're always running up the cavitation barrier. At some point, you're not going to go too much faster just from a, from a sheer physics side of things. But I think what's been the most impressive part for me of the last three, six months of these boats is how good the manoeuvres have become. I haven't heard of that many people opposing the decision to retain the AC-75 class, 
So if you oppose a decision, it would be interesting to know your thoughts and uh, and why you think it would be better for the cup to continue on to another class. Admittedly, when I first saw the AC75 design, I wasn't too keen on them. I didn't like the fact they were moving away from catamarans, which I thought were really exciting. But uh, this America's Cup that's just gone has proved me wrong, and I think the AC-75s are an exciting class of boat. And although they're not catamarans, they are foiling boats which look beautiful and have a potential to facilitate great racing. And just because we're retaining the AC-75 class doesn't mean that innovation is going to stop. There's still a lot of room for improvement in this class. Going back to the article, Ainsley comments that we probably need to make some tweaks to the boat, particularly in light airs. And he says there will be some changes to benefit everyone. On to another article here. It says Team New Zealand confirmed a few details for the 37th America's Cup, including a new nationality rule, which I'll address in a future video, and that the AC75 class would be retained after a successful debut in Auckland. As well as being a vocal fan of the AC-75s, Ainsley's also been supportive of trying to increase the number of challengers entering the America's Cup. And he says by sticking to the AC-75s, new syndicates, new challengers could be drawn into the regatta with much of the technology and understanding of the monohulls already available. And there's also the potential that new teams, which potentially have less funding, will be able to use AC-75s used in the last America's Cup. New teams will be able to approach, say, Team New Zealand and say, can we buy or have your boat that you used in the last regatta for us to use in this regatta? Interestingly, in this next article, it mentions that continuation of the use of the AC-75 class seems to be the single point of agreement between all four teams that competed in the last America's Cup. It also says here that the teams in the next America's Cup will only be permitted to build one AC-75. And I assume this is to keep costs down. Interestingly, Frenchman and former America's Cup helmsman Bruno Trouble has said that I'm fighting hard now so that the eight existing boats, because there was eight AC-75s built for the last event, can be used by the new teams which would mean doing away with a rule concerning the place of construction for the boat, which I assume uh, means that the boat has to be constructed in the nation of the challenger. But the obvious disadvantage of that is that it makes it harder for any new teams trying to come into the America's Cup. And he goes on to say, in his opinion, that the rule, that rule serves no purpose now. If we did that, the boat could be used by new teams. He says, I'm dreaming of getting it up to eight teams. And I think that would be a great thing for the America's Cup. Interestingly, he also comments that he doesn't think a French challenge uh, will be happening in this cycle. So, what are your thoughts? Do you think the AC-75 should be retained for another America's Cup or maybe two or three America's Cups? And what do you think about trying to encourage more entries to the next America's Cup? Love to hear your comments. And before you go, I have a favour to ask of you. I need some advice, really. Um, I've been working on this YouTube channel for around a year. Basically, the channel covers dinghy racing tips and sailing event news. We have a sailing online course. And our goal is to build a top sailing brand. So the question I have for you guys is whether we should change the YouTube channel name, Online Sail Coach, to something else. So if you like the name Online Sail Coach, that's great. Let us know. If you don't, I'd love to hear your suggestions. I've written down some ideas which can be found in the text below this video. Um, let me know which ones of those you like, maybe which ones you don't like. And yeah, maybe the next time you're watching this channel, uh, we'll have a new channel name. So that's everything for today. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps this video reach more people and helps our small channel grow. And stay tuned for more America's Cup news and sailing tips. See you next time.